What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are preparing the FD for an upcoming track day at Sydney Motorsport Park. I'm pretty excited about this track day because we've been in lockdown and the track hasn't been open. And now it's open, we have an opportunity to push the car as hard as possible before the weather warms up. Just as a disclaimer, I am not a mechanic and this is not an instructional video. This is simply me showing you what I do before every track day. Generally speaking, I change out most of the fluids, I service the brakes, I do a spanner check under and over the car, and then I'll send the car off for an alignment. So these are the oils I always change out before every track day. Starting with the engine oil, I've been using the Penrite 15W40, designed for rotaries, uh, paired with a genuine Mazda oil filter. Next, we're probably gonna do the rear diff oils, and also we're gonna bleed the brakes with some modal RBF 600. While we're waiting for the oil to drain, we're going to take this oil filter off and replace it with a new one. I like to loosen it, let it sit so the oil drains back into the pedestal. So just turn tight, no need to hulk strength it. Before I go ahead and fill it up with oil, I'm going to be replacing the old factory sump plug and washer with a works engineering magnetic oil sump nut. This one's designed for a Honda, but they're the same thread size, M14 by 1.5. And I've also got a new alloy washer. A better look at the magnetic sump plug, we have a 14 millimeter nut here and this magnet bit will sit inside the oil pan and attract all the little metal shavings uh, from the engine. It's not going to save your engine but it'll give you an idea of how the engine's wearing. So just topping up the oil now we drained about 4.8 litres out of the sump, so we're going to put 4.8 litres back in. So it's the next day and this afternoon we're going to be changing out the rear diff oil. I've already taken the car out for a spin, I've warmed up the diff and the oil is ready to come out. So here's the rear diff, that's the drain plug and that's the fill plug up here. I'm going to be cracking this fill plug open first to make sure that we can get it off before we start draining the oil. So always the fill plug first. Clear A. 
guys. So this is a magnetic drain plug as well. And you can see there's a bit of black paste, but that's completely normal. So while the rear diff is draining, I've gone ahead and jacked up the front of the car up. When adding and draining fluid, you want to make sure the car is as level as possible so that gravity can assist in draining the fluid out of the sump. So to add oil back in, I'm going to be using this fluid transfer syringe. This one's a Toledo one from Repco. You need it because some of the brands like Cusco, they don't come with a nozzle here. Uh, so it just comes in a tin. Whereas if you buy like a Penrite, they have a nozzle so you can squeeze the bottle and get it into the diff. So the engine oil is done, the rear diff oil is done, and now we're on to the brakes. Probably my least favorite part of the job, but it's got to be done. It's really important. What I usually do is I'll swap out my street pads for my race pads, but I've actually kept my race pads in. They're the Hawk DTC 60s, uh, and they're very aggressive on the street, but I actually haven't had many problems. They don't need much heat for them to work, um, and I'm probably going to end up leaving them in long term. What I usually do is just a quick visual inspection of the rotors and the calipers, make sure there's no leaks, and then we'll do a brake bleed for all four brakes. So tonight we're going to finish off by bleeding the brakes. You're going to need a brake bleeder of some sort. And in the past I've been using this brake bleeder from Bursons. Uh, but more recently I've been using just a simple bottle and some clear tubing. There are benefits of doing it this way. You can actually see all the fluid coming out and look at the clarity and also if there's any air bubbles left in the system. So I'm going to show you how to make a brake bleeder. This is everything you're going to need to build a brake bleeder. You're going to need a plastic bottle, probably 600 mils or more, big is better. You're going to need some clear tubing. Uh, this is just from Bunnings and the internal diameter of this hose is 5 millimeters. This is to match the bleed nipple on your brake caliper. And just some cheap brake fluid to fill it up a little. So first of all, get your drill and just drill a little hole on the top. Next, you're going to want to get about, I'd say, half a meter of tube. Let me just give it a bit more. This tube will go down through this hole. And it's good to be nice and snug just in case you spill this. You want to push the tube down all the way to the bottom. Next, you're just going to drill a small hole anywhere really. This is just for air to escape. And that's your brake bleeder. As easy as that. So lucky for me tonight, I've got my apprentice helping me out. Say hello. Hi guys. She's also my wife. Please <laughs> yeah, please subscribe. So there is a sequence to bleeding the brakes. You're going to start off with the caliper the furthest away from the master cylinder. So the first caliper I'd bleed is this rear passenger side, and then the rear driver side, and then the front passenger, and then the closest caliper, the front driver's one.
check that out. That is proper cooked. That is just from two sessions at City Motorsport Park and about a thousand Ks on the street. So yeah, I'm really glad I changed that out because that would have been a bad time next week. So that's all the fluids I always do before every track day. There are other fluids like the coolant, the gearbox oil, but I don't really change that out before every track day. I do it on a kilometers basis and both the gearbox oil and the coolant have less than 5,000 Ks. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow night, I'm gonna do a spanner check under the car in the engine bay, put the wheels back on, and this weekend we're gonna go get an alignment. Good morning everyone, it is a very early Saturday, um, but special thanks to Tom at Tire House Castle Hill. He fit me in at 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning. So we're going to go for a drive and we'll see you there. So I didn't get any footage at the tire shop today, but it wasn't anything exciting. He just made some minor corrections to straighten her up and also added another degree of camber in the rear. So I know this car is definitely going to be on rails and I can't wait to drive it at the track. So that's my rundown for the track prep that I do. Whether you're thinking of doing your own servicing or just wanting to go to the track, I hope this video was in some ways helpful. As always, please subscribe to my channel, leave us a comment below, let me know what you think of the video or if there's anything you do differently and I'll see you guys in the next one.